Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Demos Construction Tips. Now, a couple of weeks ago the YouTube user Passive Industries had asked me a question about construction and I'll read it as so. <clears throat> hey Demo, I don't have a single thing in construction sorted out yet. Which couple of structures do you think I should pick first? If anything, do you think you could make a video for beginners to start sorting into construction? Thanks. Well, uh, Passive Industries, I do appreciate the question. And I would appreciate it if more of you guys would ask me more questions about construction in the future. In any regard, this is a bit of an elaborate question as I'll take you from start to finish on what I think you should do. And I'll explain it, but there is no actual right answer. Though I think there is probably a lot of wrong answers. <laughs> uh, but whatever. I guess the, ultimately the wrong answer would be an answer that would steer you away from construction. In any case, let's roll into it, shall we? And the first thing to sort out in construction, according to my beliefs, would be buy yourself a AI turret module. Due to the fact that all players start off with a anti-infantry turret to begin with. So being able to have an AI module on top of that that has perfect aim in this game just makes sense due to the fact that you could go to any base out in the wild and drop a turret in an AI module and then drive off and hopefully the turret might score you a couple extra kills. It also provides an extra layer of defense for any construction base with very little downsides. Uh, if you look to the top right for a moment, you'll see a little thumbnail or clip. Yeah, a little clip leading off to a suggestion about turret fields and how that all works. All right, moving on. The second structure you should buy, actually it's the first structure you should buy, is a center garage due to the fact that this would allow you access to a Dorito base, which is a very solid foundation to work with when getting to construction and you already have the rampart walls so just anything you can throw onto this would just make it that much better and these next three will just fire off very rapidly you got your structure shields your repair and your sky shield now technically you can kind of do this in whatever order you want i guess you could flip uh structure shields and repair since you go from cheapest to most expensive that way but eh either or all three of these plus a Dorito framework will actually carry you pretty far and heck if you just get good at working with the natural terrain you could just even go further with it your base generally will live or die by its modules now the next one would be the pillbox and the infantry tower uh, they both have their advantages. I would value the pillbox slightly more than the infantry tower because you can just hide modules and spawn tubes inside of it. It would only be vulnerable from right in front of the doorway of the pillbox. Though the tower does give you an elevated platform which lets you see over cover and engage, I don't know, armor that's just kind of rolling all over the place across the rolling hills. So now that we got all of our basic structures down, we'll get ourselves a spawn tube. And the reason why the spawn tubes all the way back here and not towards the front is due to the fact that you can have a ant with a deliver module, or you can have a bus or a spawn beacon or a router pad. There are just lots of options to get spawning on a base. And honestly, as you get through it, you'll want to have as many options as possible as some of them will inevitably get destroyed in the middle of conflict as you've seen in some of my base fights. And the vehicle gate. Now the nice thing about vehicle gates is you can take the framework of them and usually just shove them into the terrain of the map and then just leave a nice little gate work right there or gate shield. This allows friendly forces to pass through it with ease while blocking projectiles from all directions. That said, if the gate takes enough damage, the gate will go down for something like 30 seconds or something. I don't know the exact timing. Kind of like the shield of a deployment 
bus. Though, I guess in this regard, it goes down longer than that. But same principle. It will also regen, but you do have no way of really telling how much health the shield itself has. Uh, Rao, that would be a nice UI thing to add to the gates, to just visualize how much HP the shields have. Now, after you get yourself a vehicle gate, it would be useful to start getting yourself some free vehicles to run around the place like the ant or a lightning or something. This is where the light vehicle terminal comes in handy. And it just lets friendly armor just spawn and support your base in general. Uh, further note, if you do come to a allied base, please spawn an ant first, go mine one cordium node like one 4k node and deposit and then whatever ants or vehicles you pull from that base are technically paid for already. It only took you like maybe two minutes. All right next we have the anti-air turret which by the way of all the turrets you can put down this is probably the most important one as it just kind of shoes away enemy aircraft from uh, assaulting your base. Also, if anyone damages your base, the AI of all the turrets will just automatically lock onto them and fire regardless at the range that there is between them. The spearhead turret or anti-vehicle turret. If it's useful, though the AI equivalent of it isn't all that grand due to the slow velocity of the projectile and the heavy bullet drop leading to it having a poor accuracy. But if you can get a person in it, this is actually a quite a good way of scaring enemy armor off from your base. If you get a few of them down, uh, you can even start killing or shredding enemy armor fairly quickly. The alarm module. This is absolutely a beautiful module to have. I cannot tell you how many times even me and my friends when we go out of the base just getting a ping, hey, we need to come back, so there's a random cloaker trying to destroy our base. This is very nice. Also, if you're even in the base, and it will still tell you when you have a problem with intruders. Because, you know, you can't really see a cloaker when they have deep op. God, I know that from personal experience. Uh, paint spires. These are very good to pair up with your structures to just kind of prevent enemy troops from hiding inside of them and just being rather area of denial weapons. I don't know why but NC seem to really like dying to these things a lot and I'm not sure why that is. Now that we have most of our utilities down for construction or basics I should say let's focus on giving you some fangs to start assaulting the enemy team. Here is a flail, which is mostly going to be useful on Osher, though if you can get a second builder with you and build a decoy base, it's also good for that. Uh, not the cheapest thing in the world, and honestly, it has its fair share of problems. But if you want something dead, the flail will generally kill it, so long, so long it's not in a no-deploy zone. Reconnaissance module. It's not the best thing in the world. It's rather expensive for what it gives. Honestly, a cloaker plunger or whatever that little thing they put on the ground does exactly what this thing does and is cheaper. But the nice thing about the reconnaissance module is it doesn't really decay when the silo has been destroyed and B, it doesn't take small arms damage. So if you want to hide a module behind it, because of its larger footprint, it will actually shield the weaker module around it, or behind it. Very good for that case scenario. The router spire. First thing about router spires you should probably know is they do take small arms fire. Same with the paint spire. I don't know why spires in general take small arms fire and they're very vulnerable to LMGs, but that's a thing. Uh, Anyways, router pads are nice because I usually will put down the router spire not to put a router pad down, but so I can pick up a router pad and then I can go to the flail and pick up the flail dark gun. Now the nice thing about this is the router pad will tell me exactly 500 meters away from the router spire, but the flail can shoot up to 600 meters. 
So the router spire is kind of giving me an idea where the flail can shoot and then a little bit out outside of that ring. It's actually really nice. The short variant of the anti-vehicle turret. You know, this is generally a useless item, but it does have its perks, especially in areas where there's a lot of armor and you don't want your turret to get flagged down by like five or six tanks. The short variants sometimes come in handy for that, where they only engage with maybe one or two targets at a time. And they still have the same health pool as the tall variant, so there's no problem with that. Though they do have a hard time hitting, harder time hitting vehicles due to the fact they're on the ground, and vehicles can just hide behind the terrain at that point. Vehicle ammo dispenser. This should be lower on the left. It should be, but I put it here due to the fact that I like using it as a meat wall for other items like the modules. Also, it's just nice to also be throwing more ammo towards friendly armor. It also would be nice if it threw ammo at infantry as well, but eh, I guess you can't have everything. Though its purpose is mostly redundant due to the fact that ant drivers like to drive around the deliver module most of the time when they're construction builders. Which, I, like I state, defeats the purpose of the vehicle ammo dispenser. Also, there's the fact you don't get any XP for resupplying vehicles with the tower variant. But you do get XP from the deliverer. Now here we got some EMP artillery. How do I say this? Uh, if you really want to kill another enemy base, you're going to need a glaive and you're going to need a flail. And I would suggest an, a partner to go along with you. The glaive has a range of 1000 meters, which has more range than even the orbital strike uplink unit. And will continuously fire after shooting one dart. The dart does break after a while, but uh, you should be good for like five minutes. And everyone's favorite item, the Orbital Strike Uplink Unit. Ha, oh, man, how, where do I begin? Basically, if you put this item down, you're just screaming to the whole world, Here I am! Challenge me if you dare! Honestly, that, that's probably his main function. I mean, you could try and use the the OSU for what it's meant to be, but I find more often than not it's just a single beacon for trouble to come and knock into me. I don't use them that often anymore because, yeah, I'm too busy running around my base screaming, trying to keep everything repaired while enemies are knocking at my doorstep. But if you have a friend who is willing to go drop the dart for you, great. It would be nice if they get more recognition. Oh, yeah, and uh, also artillery in general does not give uh, assist points to people who drop the dart if they're not the builder of the artillery. Just a note to keep in mind. Uh, Rao, please, please fix that one too. Alright, so the blast wall. I don't know, I, I really, I mean it's nice for filling small gaps, but what really kills this piece of equipment for me is the stairs and the two entrances on either side of it. Honestly, I would have preferred just having a smaller flat wall or a smaller rampart wall. The current blast wall is kind of redundant, honestly, due to those stairs and the infantry ports on either side of it. At least from my opinion. But it's still more useful than the ramp. Oh man, I took a look at the old 3D model of this. They, what do they do to this? Uh, the only purpose for the ramp that I could figure it out is to use it as a bridge over rough terrain. That's it. You do not use this to assault a base. It's too... It's not a big enough angle. It needs to be able to be placed so it, the ramp could at least get to the top of the wall or at least have an angle so when a vehicle jumps off of it it could get some air and actually land over the wall. But apparently it can't even do that. So, don't know what to say about that.
And finally, the last item you should buy is a light air terminal. And my reasoning for this is due to the fact that the light air terminal does not help the construction base one bit. In fact, it does a lot against the construction base as it will drain cordium from the silo with no way of spawning a vehicle that could restock this cordium since the wasp, the experimental wasp, was actually taken away from the game. Thank you, Ro. And it also kind of acts like a little bit of a bunker, a, a crappier version of the bunker for enemy infantry trying to use it for cover. Because you got the air pad up in the air, which means anything like a tower can't shoot anyone hiding under it. It's got the, the little U-shaped foundation, which means if it's raised up off the ground, People can use that and just kind of have their nice little protection. And then the two walls are just also nice to help angle, restrict the number of people they're engaging with. And the thing is massive enough, it's rather difficult to place down. Overall, it's a rather huge occupational hazard and cloakers love to hack it to hell. Now, if the light air terminal was more like the light vehicle terminal where the spawn pad was actually on the ground and not sitting in the air it would actually make a lot more sense and i would probably rate it as maybe a 22 or no actually yeah 22 in any case that's my list take a nice long look at this if you want any idea of how to get into construction and before i lose you guys before i lose you uh, we're going to talk about what's the most efficient way to get into construction. So, as you guys all know, there are four bundles to get into construction. Of the four bundles, you can see their price tags here and what each bundle has to offer. Honestly, I am not a huge fan of this, but if we do a breakdown of it, here's my little uh, way of saying it. If you buy all of construction base, it will cost you 26,250 certs. Now, that's for all the stuff you can buy, but that means you won't have access to the lumen fiber wall and you won't have access to the faction banner. Eh, shouldn't be that bad. If you can average about five to 600 certs, five to 700 certs a day, it takes you about a month to get it. Or you could get some memberships or something to help lower that timer. Now, if you want to buy all the items individually with Daybreak Cash, and we assume that 100 Daybreak Cash counts as one USD, it generally does, that will cost you approximately $147, though I like to round stuff off to $150, give or take, especially since you have to buy Daybreak Cash in groups of five or something at bare minimum. No, actually, I think it's like 15. In any case, if you were to buy all the bundles, though, it would cost you approximately $100. Though, if I have to give my recommendation, if you do want to go for all the bundles, I would just go for the 10,000 Daybreak Cash because you get a 15% deal on that. So instead of paying $100 for construction, you will get for $85 instead as you can see right here with my little demonstration. Or, if you really want to go on the cheap, you could just buy all the modules for $20. And eh, not the best situation, but at least with all of your modules, you'll be able to make some formidable bases. In any case, that's all I have for you guys today. I am sorry, Passive Industry, for the two to three week delay on this video. I do get distracted quite a bit. But if any of you guys have any ideas for future videos that you would like to, me to do, please just mention them down in the comments. In any regards, I'll see you in Planet Side. Bye!